Hi! Today I figured I'd do a somewhat of a different video, one that first and foremost isn't scripted like most of the other things I do, meaning I'll probably stumble across my words a lot here and uh, we'll have to edit certain things out. But uh, yeah, that's something, uh, this video is something that I've had people request from time to time. It's uh, more or less just a tier list of all the, not all, but a lot of the Spellforce races ranked on how strong a particular race is. Now, I'll explain a bit what my thought process was going uh, into this, how I'm ranking them and what criteria I'm applying to all of them. But yeah, uh, I figured it would be a fun video to make and something that might be useful for people and just want to have a better idea of where things are on a general power scale in Spellforce, right? So if you want to make your own campaigns or D&D scenarios or stuff like that, you would have a better idea of uh, how to rank certain uh, races or individuals. Now, first and foremost, I just want to say that all of these races, their rankings will be based on a sort of average. So not the peak potential a race can reach, but just sort of the, the average of a particular race. Humans will be a great example of this once we get to them. Um, a race that I would consider average on its own, but uh, that has incredible peaks that it can reach. And under, the, under certain conditions, under ideal conditions, they can contest races that uh, on average would be a lot stronger. But we'll get to that a bit later. Now, uh, is there something I forgot to mention? I don't think so. Yeah, I think we can start with it. Now, I have 31 races here. Uh, actually, not just races. I have 31 races plus some individuals like Arin, uh, Aeonia, and the Elements, and stuff like that, which I also wanted to put on the list because I figured they deserve a uh, ranking of their own. I didn't want to just bundle them or bunch them up uh, together with everything else. So, yeah, let's start with Crawlers. Now, Crawlers, for those of you who don't know, are the uh, creatures we first see in Breath of Winter, in the marshes of, of Breath of Winter, like uh, Mira Thur. I will try to put a picture on screen here, and ranking those for me was sort of tricky, and I feel like I'll be saying this a lot this video, but it was tricky for the reason that they aren't particularly strong. Um, they can be dangerous, but I, I wouldn't put them anywhere... I, I, I wouldn't really put them on the same level as, as some of the races, say humans, elves, orcs, uh, and so on. Let's say the main six. So going by that, I think I will put them into average tier. But they will be towards the bottom of the average tier once this starts uh, filling out a bit more. That's another thing. I only have five tiers here. I didn't want to overcomplicate it, but I will try to justify why I put something in a particular spot, in a tier, and if there are big uh, discrepancies between certain certain things in a tier, certain races in a tier, I will mention those. But yeah, I, I, for now let's put crawlers into average, and while we're at it, uh, I also want to put humans into average. Um, something I mentioned earlier, and again, humans have incredibly high peaks under the right circumstances. Um, going back to when the humans first came onto the scene in Spellforce, more or less, they uh, managed to defeat the dragons. That's a big feat that you can't really take away from them. And true, it was with the help of griffins and all of that, but still, it's something that the elves and the dwarves didn't manage to achieve. Now, the humans had greater numbers, and that is something to be taken into consideration. Uh, but I feel like on average, just if you take the average human, because they are the most populous race on EO, and if you take just a farmer, a human, sort of, like, he, he, yes, he can defend himself, and I feel like an average human might stand a chance against the average crawler, one of those small ones, but I don't think they're anything too special, if that makes sense. All right, so next up, demigods, and with demigods, we only really have one to speak of right now, and that will be Baleol. Now, for demigods, I will put him into godlike. I'll put Belial, in this case, into godlike, because he is looking at all the races that are on EO, even the stronger races that are on EO, but not considering stuff like the Guardians, Aeonio, the Elements. Uh, he is stronger, but I 
do feel like he's a fair bit weaker than any of the Guardians would be, and that's a fact that you can sort of trace back to, to him serving Zorach when Zorach was creating the Dark Races, so he's clearly weaker than them. Now, if we were to go into how strong the Guardians were, Zorach is probably one of the stronger ones in that whole bunch, but I feel like all of them at, at a base level would still be stronger than Belial, so that's why I'll put demigods and Belial, in this case, into the godlike tier, but towards the end of the godlike tier, once we start filling it out. Demons, I will put under strong. Demons are definitely a, a bunch where you have some very or, or some fairly weak ones and some insanely strong ones. If you take uh, if you take a look at the law of something like the gargoyles, for example, those are considered to be fairly weak, and for most, uh, even humans, some necromancers um, can can control them fairly easily. So, with with that in mind, yes, there are weak demons, but there are also very strong ones like uh, Ulathar or one of the demon lords or, or princes and stuff like that. So, if we take an average demon, which I'm not sure if I, I would take a, a great demon or one of those nether demons as, as, as one of the average, but I do feel like they are a, a cut above everything that will be an average and they edge into the strong category. Um, because I think most individuals would have problems fighting a demon if we look at the averages. Orcs as well. Orcs... I would put into average, but I would put them above humans. And that's for the for the reason that I think the average orc, while they while there are orcs that are sort of in this working class, they they they, they don't necessarily uh, they aren't necessarily considered the greatest warriors, orc as a culture or as a race and their culture just just fight more and have more experience in that area. Overall, so I think pitting an average orc against an average human would be more favorable for the orc in most cases. All right, now we have shapers with the A. Shapers with A means shapers after getting the all fire. There's also going to be shapers without the all fire down here, and we can rank both of them, I guess, at the same time. But shapers with the all fire are definitely godlike. Shapers with the uh, all fire are definitely a cut above most races because taking a look at what the what the shapers are in general, just without the all fire, um, they would be the perfect mix of humans, elves, and dwarves. Which, considering that all those three races devolved from the shapers, eventually makes a lot of sense. So, just a baseline without the all fire, they would be above, and with the all fire, that just puts them this this cut above that might even, in my opinion, well, I'm not sure if it could rival a demigod like Belial. That's something that we don't really have info on, but I would certainly put Shapers with the All Fire above something like the Circle Mages. I think the Circle Mages are also very uh, strong. Obviously they are, there's uh, plenty of feats to back that up, but Shapers with the All Fire I would still put a bit above. Just because Shapers as a race, have a higher potential ceiling than any other, any of the other races that later joined the circle. So humans, orcs, dwarves, elves, and dark elves. So just going by that, I would rank them a cut above. With that, now we have dragons. Dragons are also a very curious bunch, because this dragons, and I decided to put them into one tier, but I will mostly focus on elder dragons, or those very big dragons, like uh, Ua in, in Spellforce 2, and stuff like that. And for those, I would actually maybe even put them into the lower parts of Godlike. Below the Shapers with the Allfire. But that's mainly due to the reason that the dragons have, have drakes, in this whole category that, compared to Elder Dragons, are considerably weaker. So if we take the average of those, um, and still I'm leaning it a bit more towards the Elder Dragons, but if we take the average, I would I would put them below the Shapers, which um, for some might not make a lot of sense, considering that the Dragons were the race that abolished the Shapers. But 
destroyed them um, pretty much. But same as with the humans and the dragons, there were a lot of factors that played into this and it wasn't just a one-on-one -on -one situation. If we take if we take somewhat of the average between those two and how that would play out, and if we look towards Dragonstorm where we have a Shaper with the power of the Allfire fighting not one but two Elder Dragons and holding his own fairly well, even getting close to defeating them. Now, admittedly, those two dragons weren't at their peak, but neither was he, to be, to be completely fair. So I would still rank Shapers with the Allfire above, Dragons slightly below, though when it comes to numbers and if they overwhelm them, how they did back when they drove them away from, or not drove them away, but basically um, made them extinct almost, um, I would say the Dragons do stand a chance, but on average, slightly below. Now, elements are the first thing that I'm going to put into the Supreme tier, and with elements, I mean the primal elements. Um... The primal elements are a um, primordial force of Eo, more or less, something that's been with the world longer than any life, longer than uh, longer than even Aeonia, meaning uh, they were there before Aeonia came onto Eo, and they're just something that's very difficult to pin down, but judging by some feats and how Aeonia and how some of the Guardians talk about them, and just looking at what they did, um, what they did during uh, the convocation when they were set free for a limited amount of time, you can't put them into anything but supreme. I mean, they have world-shattering capabilities on their own, and I just... That doesn't matter if you consider them to be sentient or non-sentient, so just like forces of nature, but the power that they bring with them is definitely above any shapers with the Allfire, any dragons, any demigods, um, and they will only be surpassed by one thing, which we can rank one, which we can rank right now, and that would be Aeonia himself, because we know that Aeonia managed to subdue them. But even so, we know that Aeonia was tired after doing so, so they are fairly close, Aeonia and the elements. He does edge them out, um, and he did manage to banish them, but it wasn't a an easy task for him, even though he is, in terms of, of power levels, and even comparing it to the Guardians, head and shoulders above anything else that we have on EO. Um, I don't think it's quite surprising that Aeonia takes the top spot on this entire tier list, because, well, it is Aeonia. It's, he's the old father, the god of the stars, the person who more or less created EO, or at least created all the life on EO. So, um, giving him a top spot in Supreme is fitting. Here we now have the Fjall Dark. And the Fjall Dark are also a... quite an interesting race. They aren't... there's not many of them. There's only a few that Zorah managed to create. And um, as such, they do run the risk of being overwhelmed by greater numbers. We have examples in Breath of Winter where a Fjall Dark was taken a prisoner by the by the ice elves because they managed to subdue him with magic but the big trump card that all the fjall dark have is the fact that they can't be hurt by anything except a weapon that's not of this world so meaning not of eo which sort of makes them immortal to to most things unless you have the shadow blade um like in the games but just by that alone and just because on average, they have a very strong intellect. They are very good fighters. They are amazing with magic. I would put them in the godlike tier. Um, below dragons in terms of raw destructive power. But nonetheless godlike. At least for me. Now goblins. Goblins I would just chuck into weak. I don't think goblins are particularly strong. Now there are some outliers. Um, like Gitzo from Breath of Winter. Who I would put into average or maybe even strong. But... Uh, by and large, goblins are just not a very formidable foe. I think their biggest strength lies in the fact that there's a lot of them, usually. And, um, yeah, not too much to say about them, actually. Um, weak, at least for me. The gods, with gods meaning guardians, I would also put into supreme. But here's the first, uh, here's the first place where I would put a big caveat there, because the god, the, the the difference in power between Aeonia and the Elements and the Guardians is very big. I don't think this tier list illustrates it, and it might even make sense to, to make a, another tier between Supreme and Godlike, but I would put the Guardians in. But it's, it's, just, it's just hard to fathom 
how big of a difference there is between between the first two in the supreme tier and the guardians on their own and that's something they say themselves with uh, i think it was arian in one of the official texts stating that even all of the 13 guardians alone don't come close to the power of aeonia and they wouldn't be able to subdue the elements which is something that they've also shown to be incapable of doing when the convocation happened they were just powerless and had to stand by and watch you know what the elements were doing um with Eo, so we have it straight from the horse's mouth. The Guardians can't really match up to those. That being said, the reason why I'm putting them into the Supreme tier is because they are still a lot stronger than anything in the Godlike tier. Uh, even the, sh the demigods like Belial or Shapers with the Allfire. And we have some examples of, of people trying to obtain Godlike power. Um, but I think I think none of them have ever managed to. So the Shapers with the All Fire or the Circle Mages all striving for this next level of uh, being a Guardian. Some humans even, like Malachi, um, who have come fairly close on, on, to, to be on a very general um, high power level. You know, but still as individuals they were always outmatched with the Guardians. Malachi, who was considered to be one of the stronger humans even without possessing the All Fire, got com completely smacked. The Guardian swept the floor with him once they actually decided to take action, so they are a lot stronger. Even if we go back to Shadow of the Phoenix and Hirin in the City of Souls, when he talks about how if he wasn't bound by the rules of their father, he would go to the Bone Temple in the Black Jungle and just destroy the Circle, destroy Hokan and free Arian, his brother implying that if he had the uh, ability to do so, now the Black Jungle is another thing because the Guardians lose their powers there, but if he really wanted to, and if he would decide to break the rules of Aeonia, he could do it easily. So I still think there's a big discrepancy between the Godlike and Supreme tier, but also a big one between Aeonia and the Elements and the Gods. Ice Elves, I actually don't want to do first. Let's do Elves first. And Elves, I would put into the average tier. Elves I would put into the average tier, but both above orcs and humans, and that's mainly due to their magic capabilities or the, the bond they have with magic. Um, you could make the argument that some someone like the, the humans uh, or the orcs also can use great magic and they have the added benefit of, of uh, being able to fight with, with heavy armor and things like that, but comparing fighting styles say, uh, melee fighting or rage fighting to magic and spell force, I don't really think it's close. Because if you if you take a look at everything that's sort of in the Supreme and Godlike tiers, a lot of those are based on magic or some sort of magical um, protection or, or some caveats that uh, render them unable to be damaged by, by, by regular means. So I think magic is just stronger in general than fighting in, in with, with other styles, so like swords, bows, axes and whatnot, it can be strong. And if someone has the right armor and wields the right weapons, it can be very strong. But I always think that a, a very good mage can um, a very good mage can overpower a very good fighter. And that's something that throughout Spellforce we do see multiple times. Now, admittedly, in a lot of those cases, like with a young Rowan or the Dark One and Amra, when he kills him, um, it's just a power discrepancy that's too big with a uh, circle mage basically using the all fire versus someone who just has uh, magic, uh, so armor that protects him against magic, but you can't really protect against that, so yeah. Um, but even looking at the averages, I think the average elf, if she masters some magic, could outduel the average orc or the average human. Again, considering that the average human or orc would not be a uh, supreme mage or um, supreme mage or, or a especially talented fighter. Skirks I would put in weak and under goblins. Skirks are interesting creatures, they are smart, they are very helpful and love to work and they, they uh, definitely have their place in the world but I don't think there's as many creatures that, uh, well with, with the uh, exception of maybe like spiders and beetles and stuff like that but there's not many creatures that are as weak as them because they basically, for the lack of a better word, get made someone's bitch every time, you know, they, they encounter someone like the Dark Elves or, uh, or the Kitar. 
later on and uh, things like that. So they can't really hold their own, they're not good fighters. They are wise in their own way and um, they can definitely be helpful as... Um, I don't want to call them supporting units, but they can be helpful as a sort of support, but on their own they're just generally very feeble and weak. Dark Elves, out of all the normal races, uh, so out of all the big six races, I would put Dark Elves under strong. I would put them under demons in this case, but I would nevertheless put them under strong. Because I think Dark Elves are basically, if you took the Elves and then just amped them up a little bit. So they have a very similar connection to magic, basically equal to the Elves, but they have a more militaristic society, which means that it doesn't matter how or where you are born into a Dark Elven society, from a young age, you will, as a male at least, you will go into uh, one of the three casts that they have, so the Archon, the Dracon, and the Sinistra, and you'll just basically be training all the way into adulthood. So just looking at it like that, they're also very... So they're good fighters, they're good mages, they're very uh, intellectual, um, have a strong belief in uh, their god, Noor, and their faith, which I think just puts them a cut above uh, some of the average races that we have there. So for me, Dark Elves would be in the strong tier. Ogres, I would put into average, and I would put them under Orcs. I think most Orgas, um could handle a human without a problem. We even see that in uh, the Order of Dawn, when some ogres capture uh, some of the humans there and, you know, give them give them basically a hard time trying to, trying, to, trying to free themselves. Now, to be fair, there were more ogres than humans in that case, and those humans were travelers, not someone who uh, is a fighter. But again, the average human won't be a paladin in this case, which is why I would rank them slightly above. But it is fairly close. It is fairly close. The ogres have some things that, in a realistic scenario, just wouldn't play into their hands. Like they're very short. Um, they aren't uh, especially like not, they aren't very smart, and they could just be outmaneuvered by a lot of the races. I think of them as orcs, but as orcs that are maybe slightly dumber, slightly dumber, and not as uh, affine to magic. And now that I think about it, maybe I would even put them below humans. Maybe I would actually put ogres below humans. Just for that reason that they're not, they're not that smart. They can be outmaneuvered by intellect. So yeah, let's keep them here. Beasts. Now beasts I would definitely put above. Let's say where the ogres were before. Because I don't think a human could take a beast, uh, realistically. Uh, an orc might, an orc might. Now beasts, similar to goblins, um, and some other uh, races that we'll put on this list have their strength in numbers, which means that usually with them, the main issue you'll have that there's just too many of them. You kill one, more come to you. But just on a one-on-one -on -one scenario, I think an orc might be able to take a beast, uh, a human, not so much, if it's an average. Now, giants. Giants are tricky. I'm not sure if I should put giants on the top of the strong tier or the bottom of the godlike tier. Because they aren't very smart, but they are some of the oldest beings that exist on EO. Some of basically existing since the dawn of time, as one of the first races. And as such, they, they possess a, a certain power and a certain respect that they command that's not that easy to overcome for most individuals. Um, if we're talking a one-on-one -on -one scenario, I don't think that any or most demons would be able to beat a giant. No dark elf would be. Now, I fear dark would, and a dragon likely would, but that's why I would put them on the bottom of the godlike tier, at least for now. Um, I think giants are very strong. Some of them even possess magic, and they hit like a truck. Even throughout the games in Spellforce 1 and 2, where you play as above average individuals, it, they're not easy to take down and they are always depicted as a sort of grave danger that one should be wary of. Aren't I would put into the godlike tier, but I'm not quite sure where. Aren't I might even put above Baelial on an individual level. 
yeah, I think I think Arin fits well here, because the, the reason why I singled out Arin is because Arin is just set to be so much stronger than any of the other dragons. The fact that every dragon, every of the every single of the elder dragons, ran away from him when he was born uh, in his nest because it was just simply too cold around him that no dragon could survive that. Um, alone speaks to his power, because we know how powerful normal dragons are. There's also insane feats that we have of Arin, where he basically covered a big portion of Eo in ice and created a sort of eternal winter for a, a duration, and he was really a, a world-ending threat in that regard. Now, Baleol, you could make the argument that he's also a very strong being. Yes, and uh, Baleol was the one who created the undead, so he's a very proficient uh, magic user, but I think just in terms of feats, and, and keep in mind, just because someone's a demigod like Baleal doesn't mean that they're immortal. Maybe they live for an insanely long time and they're very hard to hurt, we just, we don't have info on that, but it doesn't mean that they're immortal. So I think pitting them together, a fight against Arin and, and uh, Baleal, would maybe go into Arin's favor, if Arin could freeze him. It, it depends, but I feel like a one-on-one -on -one fight all assets pulled out, all cards on the table might go to Arin. That's why I'm leaning slightly more towards putting him uh, above Bailey. Although he could be below depending on how you look at it, but for me right now, I'll put him above. The Undead, I will put... Um, I'll put below the Elves. And maybe even below the Orcs. Maybe even below the Orcs, because the Undead, again... There's, there's so many different variations of the undead, and some of them are insanely strong, but some of them are just skeletons, and I think those skeletons could even be beaten by the average human. Uh, there are some examples of that even, where, where humans hold their own against the undead, and it's, it's, it's fairly close, to be honest. I just think that uh, going by the fact that there are some undead that are insanely powerful, I have to bump them up slightly. Though I still wouldn't put them above something like the Orcs or the Elves, on average. Uh, same thing goes for the Shah Lizards. Shah Lizards I would also put somewhere around here. Now maybe above Orcs, maybe below. Um, actually, probably below. I think the Shah Lizards would fit below. As indigenous creatures or lizards of Xu, they, they are strong. They um, have their strong points. For sure, but they're also very primitive in the weaponry they use. I don't think they would be as powerful as orcs and not as blood hungry or battle hungry as orcs in most regards, which is why I think an orc could take a shard lizard. They would still be a formidable foe, though, for anyone below them in this case. Shadows, I would put into strong, and that's mainly because shadows. I'll actually I'll put shadows. Um, do I put them above dark elves or above demons even? Yeah, I'll put them above, because the, the one thing the shadows have going for them is that if they catch you unaware, which in most cases will be, you know, the case, um, you just die. You can't really do anything about them in terms of the law. Now, if you have ways of, of uh, seeing them and taking this advantage away from them, then, you know, I, they would be significantly weaker. But even so, even on an individual level, I would put the shadows into strong because they have the theoretical ability to one shot most people below them there. And I, I really think most people, even a lot of the demons, or maybe not the insanely strong demons, but going by the average, they might be able to, to uh, one shot the average demon. There's also this interesting thing about whether the shadows would be able to kill a field dark if they really wanted to because they're not from this world, so uh, a lot of them just going to the field dark and if he doesn't spot them on time if they could just, you know, do some serious damage to him, so that also might be an interesting thing to to consider in this case, but I would put them I would put them here around here. I think they they fit well on the top of the strong tier. All right, now next up, Griffins. And Griffins, if if you pair Griffins with humans, right, they are for sure strong to you. If you pair them with humans and have humans riding on them, um, 
of whether it be barbarians or, or just normal civilized humans, they are insanely strong. But on their own, I think I would put them fairly low. I think I would even put a griffin maybe below humans. Because the human, humans managed to befriend them, don't get this wrong, the humans didn't subdue them or, or force them into following them or anything like that, so we don't really have any info on how a Hawaii fight between them would work out. We know that they are a lot weaker than dragons, but then most people or most races on this list are weaker than dragons. Um, but I just feel like a griffin on their own, while they are powerful and they can fly, I don't think... Well, actually no, since we're looking at averages, I think I would put them above humans. Just because an average human wouldn't be able to to fight a griffin, um, I would put I would put them. Hmm, oh, it's difficult because we're looking at those averages. Because peak human could defeat a griffin, I'm fairly certain. But averages, oh, averages are hard. Averages are very hard. Hmm. Damn, I, I'm not sure. I think for now, let's put the Griffins... I'll put the Griffins on top of the average tier, actually. I'll put the Griffins on top of the average tier, which I realize now is a big bump from where I wanted to put them initially, but let's leave them here for now. I wouldn't quite put them in strong, but I think they would have a decent shot against anything below them here. Shai Khan are definitely strong tier, though. I just don't know whether I would put them above demons or below demons. I would put them above Dark Elves on average because the Shai Khan are a militaristic people um, and they are renowned as very strong warriors and mages and mercenaries and stuff like that, so they definitely can hold their own. Even the average Shai Khan can. But whether I would put them above demons, that's debatable. That's debatable. If we take a nether demon, maybe. Maybe. But then, again, I just... Hmm. Or maybe due to the fact that the Shai Khan can be revived with the power of the dragon blood inside them, maybe I would put them above. And I think they're smarter and uh, than the demons would be. So I, I'll put them above demons, but still below shadows. Yeah, let's have them here for now. Minotaurs, I would put above elves. Minotaurs, I had in my mind for a while now and... They're definitely stronger than beasts. Uh, they were the leaders of the beasts in a lot of the texts that we have in a lot of the gameplay scenarios as well. So they are cut above them. And I think a, a proper minotaur on average could handle a shark, could handle orcs, could handle elves. Maybe struggle with a griffin because a griffin can fly. But everything else, I think he fits well here. Ice elves, I would put under strong. And I'll put ice elves under strong, perhaps even a Above Dark Elves, perhaps even above Dark Elves, still below Demons, but the Ice Elves and the Elves, while they are technically the same race, I decided to separate them just because their society functions very differently, and while normal Elves um, still have the average working bee, let's call it, of their society, the Ice, the ice Elves are very similar to, to Dark Elves in the sense that um, they are devoted to Arryn, to protecting Arryn and Senven to the Arryn Order, and as such, they, they uh, from a young age, they practice powerful magic, they practice everything they need to protect them, and uh, to ensure that, you know, neither Arryn nor Senven are ever endangered by anything. It doesn't always work out, but, you know, they, they, they try. So just going by that, I would put them into strong tier, a bit above Dark Elves. Normal Shapers, I would also put into the strong tier. I would put Normal Shapers in... I would put it into... on the top of the strong tier. Above Shadows. Reason for that mainly is, and why I put them below something like Giants, is that we know Shapers enslaved Giants. They also enslaved all of the other races, but this only happened once they got the Allfire. Uh, once they could manage to control it. So without it, I would bump them a bit below. I would put them below giants. Now they are definitely uh, on average more powerful than elves, humans, dwarfs, uh, any of the or any of the main races, as I've stated earlier, because they are a combination of those pretty much. But without the all fire, I think they are, they are a very capable race with a very high magical ceiling, but still not this godlike level of power that would be required to bump them into the upper tier. Now the Circle Mages, on the other hand, are, and the Circle Mages I would put below the Shapers with the Orphire. Might be a bit controversial, 
for some people because um, there are a lot more feats that we have of the Circle Mages uh, compared to the Shapers with the Orb Fire. But again, just going back to the whole fact that Circle Mages are the main races, so humans, elves, dwarves, orcs, and dark elves with the power of the Orb Fire and the Shapers as a baseline have a higher ceiling. I think a Shaper with the Orb Fire can achieve greater heights than any of the other races with the Orb Fire could. That's why I'm keeping them close but I think a Shaper would ultimately be more powerful. Trolls, I will put in the strong tier, but below... Well, actually, it depends. It depends. If a Dark Elf, if they are a powerful magic user, they could take down a Troll. If they aren't, if they're a fighter, I think the Troll wins in most cases. The Ice Elves, I would still leave above them because most Ice Elves are magic users, and if they just freeze the Troll, um, if they just freeze the troll, they you know they can they can deal with them on average. But uh, but then again, then again, if I think about it, in Breath of Winter they did have issue dealing with those trolls there. Now trolls are really strong on average. I mean they're meant to be. That's what Zorach made them. They feel no pain, or basically no pain. Um, and they're very durable and they hit like a truck. So no, actually, actually, now that I think about it, let's keep. Let's keep trolls above them. They aren't very smart, but I feel like in a duel, a troll can be very deadly. A troll can be yeah, definitely very deadly. Now, wolflings, I will keep below dark elves because we know that the wolflings were, to some extent, bred by the dark elves to use um, to sort of destabilize the whole border between the dark elven kingdom of La on Fiora and the humans of the Highmark. Um, so, so they were bred by them. I wouldn't say they're as strong as them, uh, but definitely strong, definitely stronger than something like a Minotaur, um, in my eyes at least, which is why I would put them at the bottom of the strong tier. And last but not least, dwarves. And dwarves, I would keep in average. I would keep dwarves in average. Um, but now where is the, is the question? I think a dwarf could beat an orc. One-on-one. -on -one. Because one of the big things that a dwarf has over an orc uh, is that while well, they're both very good at fighting, orcs really have this strength in numbers and the dwarves are more elite fighters on their own. So on average, I think a dwarf could beat an orc. Whether he could beat an elf really depends on how we look at the average of the elves. If, you know, if, if the elf is a proficient magic user on average, or if she's just sort of like a fighter. If she's a fighter, I would bump the dwarves above the elves, but just because dwarves don't really have this magic affinity that the elves have, I would still keep them below. And, um, yeah, I think, I think I'm think i happy with how this list turned out. Now, again, some things might require a different tier, like the gods being maybe in a tier between godlike and supreme and stuff like that, and some discrepancies are fairly big between them, but that's where I would like to know what you think about this. Uh, if you agree with the ranking, um, if you have uh, any other reasoning why you would put someone higher, put someone lower, uh, maybe tell me if I forgot something, all of those things you can put in the comments, I'm going to read all of it. Um, and yeah, looking forward to that. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was helpful in some way. I noticed right now that it's going for almost 40 minutes, but hey, at least we got to talk about the races a bit. And yeah, with that, Thanks for watching, thanks for anyone who managed to sit through the whole thing, if they did, and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!